Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on, man? Today, we are joined by some of the best analysis in the game, the world champion himself. Give it up for Chris Duarte, a.k.a. Parasite. We got the one and only, the multi-world champion, multi-champion legend icon to the Call of Duty space. Give it up for Patrick Price, a.k.a. Aches. We got the executive producer, Mr. Ben J. Nassim. And, of course, we got a special guest in the building, the multi FPS champion, multi-champion, one of the best to ever do it. Halo, doesn't matter. God, it doesn't matter. He's one of the best. The handsome motherfucker himself. Give it up <laughs> for EY, a.k.a. Enable. Yeah. That might have been the best intro I've ever got. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know I got you, bro. Sam, if you guys are wondering, he, he had some plans today. He actually didn't watch the Grand Finals today. He had to dip out. He left it. He didn't watch the Grand Finals. Can't make the show. So uh, we'll be missing you, Sam LaRue. We'll be missing you, man. Well, till next time. Till next time for sure. But how you guys doing, Ian? How you doing, man? Thank you for hopping on, bro. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, Pat hit me up. He said, yo, Sam's just not cutting it. You had to make up some excuse for him why he couldn't make it. So, you know, the nub is here. Let's Watch go. the matches. It was a great event. Hell yeah, so, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate the invite. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir, man. We love having you on. How's everybody else doing? Ben, how you doing today, man? You doing all right? Yeah, no, I've been sitting here, woke up early to watch Challenger's uh, finals. We'll get to that in a second. Um, some big sporting events also going on today. Uh, what happened? And football, great... the Ravens lost, right? So, yeah, so the Ravens lost to uh... the Chiefs. So, Patty Ma, Patty Ma, listen, the Chiefs are the new Patriots, bro. I'm calling it Yeah, now. they might be. A lot of people are comparing uh, Mahomes to, to Brady, right? A lot of people and, are uh, saying he's the next and one. And, Tom, the Lions right now are up a decent amount on the Niners. And what a story that would be of Detroit football. After all the years in the wilderness... I, might I, be back on. Might be back in the mix. Might have an opportunity to finally bring a championship to Detroit. I just think all those memes of everybody saying like everybody hoping Lamar Jackson finally takes him down. They show like the Taylor Swift and then like Mahomes' his wife in a crowd. You know how everybody like fucking can't stand yeah. them for some reason. And everybody's like, oh, we only have one hope when it cuts to Lamar Jackson and shit. But now he just got shit on. So you know they're going on <laughs> probably. Pat, how you doing, man? You doing good, bro? How's X Defiant? <laughs> Your predictions well, it, almost went all the way it's through. It's a Sunday. Um, yeah, I got I got hold, Tom. Um, you know, I, I thought FaZe was going to win this in the in the grand finals, but I did, pre you know, correctly predict that Toronto would upset him in the winter finals. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, Tom, it's one it's one event, you know, one out of I think there's five more events. So I'm not too down on myself. I think I'll, I think I'll get the next five or four in a row correct. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. just it's just a little. But you, you know, went, you went in a little spree last year, didn't you? Didn't you guess the winner like three uh, events yeah, in a every, row? Or four it was every row? event except the first one in champs. And champs should have hit two, but fucking the trolls. <clears throat> Toronto the trolls. let me. Yeah, It'd be yeah, like yeah. that, man. Duarte, what's going on with you, man? You're muted, Duarte. Duarte, you're muted, man. You okay, hello. Them? Sorry. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was muted. Uh, anyways, I had a great day. I got a haircut. Got to watch some uh, cool Call of Duty, and uh, I predicted Toronto to win yesterday. So uh -oh. I got that right. I was predicting the event winners on a Saturday. I went, Weird. I went flawless. <laughs> I went flawless today. I had no horse in the race. I wasn't just betting on my friends. I said, you know what? Let me look at this objectively, and I got it right. I had a flawless day. So listen, y'all motherfuckers are cheating in the predictions. Okay, I know what's going on. Hey, what you're... cheating is going on? Okay, there's no cheating okay. going on. No, 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 Tom, Tom, let him know. Okay, and this I, is what's I, going I on. Go there's ahead. people saying there's people who vote in the breaking point chat. It's a group DM that we have, right? Yeah. And they'll predict one team, and then there's certain individuals on the show Not at me. this time that predict the opposite on the show. That way, they who have both teams, and then after the fact. Sam did it fucking in 4K on the timeline yesterday. He did it on fucking. He did it in it four fucking K. I can show you, um, Chris. You're on multiple shows predicting different winners on different shows. Nah, so you have a good move, Chris. This is some bullshit, man. Nah, See, I'm a good move. Tom, man. Tom is just mad nah, because listen, tweak. just so chat knows, since we've been doing the breaking point predictions, this is the way we've been doing it in the DM. And you know what Tom doesn't do? He sometimes he doesn't check the DM and he gets mad at the fucking picks. And not his picks, and he cried, baby Jesus. Like, so, Tom, also, I think I, so, I think I heard Ben. Bitch. I think I heard Ben pick a different winner on Scrap Time too. So it's Ben yeah, too. Nah, Ben, are you fucking cheesing me, Ben? Are you? Yeah, that was like fucking four days ago. I can change bro, my Bro, stick to your guns. Nah, I don't bro. Give a shit, Pat. I don't give a shit. Uh, you, you see what I gotta time? deal with, Ian? You see what I gotta deal with crew, over here? Tom, the whole crew, the whole cheated, fucking bro. crew, a bunch of fucking stunats, man. Everybody's cheating. I personally had Toronto, by the way. I did have Toronto. What happened, Ian? What'd you say? I had Toronto. I I had them from the start. Oh, where'd you get that one at? Did you mark that down somewhere? Yeah, it's in, it's somewhere. My <laughs> I, I thought you had LADs. I thought that's what I heard. 
I have no yeah. <laughs> Octane and Kenny not on that team no more. Them boys is doo-doo. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I can't yeah. ride for them no more. <laughs> Listen, let's hop into it. First thing I want to start off with today is the challengers. Let's just get challengers out the way. FC Black, aka my team, Los Bullens team and Kason's team, FC Black got it done this weekend. And let me tell you something, man. It wasn't even close, bro. They dominated challengers. Like dominated. I woke up at like 7 a.m. today, four hours of sleep to watch the grand finals. Grand finals looked like it looked like a breeze Wait, hold, for them. Hold, hold, hold. Well, back up. You actually, we need to shout out your mom. Your mom actually saved you. My mom? Well, no, I was up. I, w I set an alarm for 7.30 because that's when it was supposed to start. But, okay. this, but then I woke up at 7.30 and there was no live stream. No, no, I don't know if they were late or what was going on. So then I went to, I set an alarm for 30 minutes later. And then I was going to, and then when I woke up 30 minutes later, my mom had texted me saying, hey, it's about to start. And I was like, oh shit. When I woke up and I saw her text, I ran to my computer and just went live. Uh, so I smell like shit. Uh, but mm -hmm. it was a good day. It was a good day. No shower, no nothing. I just literally just woke up, hopped on a setup. Um, but it was a really good day, bro. I was super proud of the squad. I thought they played incredible. Obviously, Asim's a good friend of mine. Just to see him finding a lot of success when I feel like a lot of people were talking shit in his name, especially last year. Even with Exceed, Brack, uh, um, all these guys, man. Kremp. Kremp had an amazing uh, year. I think Kremp, or sorry, an amazing tournament. I think Kremp's probably the MVP. Uh, yeah, did they yeah, give it MVP it out? Yeah, he was the honorary MVP. Yeah, I think he had like a 1.4 or something like that, like a 1.45 or something. He he shit. went off in like the finals, like 1.3 or something. Like he was yeah. ridiculous. And, and and I know for a fact that at least half of his team, maybe all of them, is probably going to the league because I already know some phone calls are hitting the hitting the table and yeah, I'm hearing about some, it. I got some texts since we've been and, doing uh, a lot of parties. And, you know, it's down. like a bittersweet because, one, you know, obviously that's the goal, right? If you're on FC Black, like that was always my goal. Like if you play for FC Black, I want to get you into the league. I, I feel like I sound like Doug with fucking Boston Academy, but it's true. And uh, and now they're all going to the league, and now it's like, damn, but now I'm losing the fucking squad. You know, now I'm losing a team, and I got to try and figure it out and see what we're going to do. But, man, I couldn't be happy for these guys and uh, happier for these guys. And to, to see them come out and dominate the way they did in Challengers, I think uh, says a lot about them, all four of them, all four of these players. Yeah. I definitely think these guys deserve a shot, for sure. It, they definitely do, but something I just want to touch on um, in regards to Challengers, a lot of people kind of like – underrate the importance of it and a lot of people are like oh these guys are former pros you know they should go in there and dominate there's a couple other former pros out there that had a really disappointing result at this tournament Ooh. um i think was what was their team it was like gunless paul x i think decimate those guys i can't even remember what they, tom they might have tom yeah tom grab there's a couple people out there that have been the pro league temp yeah. temp also like didn't uh place too well like obviously there's a lot of factors that go into that and their teammates and stuff however Listen, Challengers is no joke. There's a lot of talented players. FC Black, obviously the most um, put together roster, very hardworking. Shout out to Mayhem as well, the coach. I think he gets kind of overlooked. He was a part of the, the project of the Toronto Academy, the LAG Academy. And now obviously with FC Black, um, he deserves a spot in the league as well as a coach. I think he's a, he's a phenomenal, a phenomenal one. So yeah, but shout out to, shout out to FC Black, man. Well, I mean, listen, there's there's an argument here. Sorry to cut you off, Ben, but do you think that some of these guys should try and stay together? I mean, I was saying, like, even for Asim and Kremp, like, if you're going to a pro team, you might as well just go as a duo. Just go together, you know? Where, where the AR do it, like, if Exceed and Brack go somewhere, like, they should just do shit together. They should try and stay together because they ha they do play really well with each other. Um, I know they were playing in challenges. It's a different ball game once you get into the CDL. I think um, the, uh, the issue, Tom, is this is what's going to... Here's what happened. Yeah, it's very difficult to do. I know where you're going like, with okay, this. They're like, okay, we're a duo, and they go to teams, and the teams are like, we only have one spot. It's just going to be, you know, dog eat dog kind of rolled. I think they're a great duo as far as the aggressive pressure they put <clears> on the map. Again, I just don't know if, like, there's going to be an opportunity where someone's just picking up both of them. It might just be them kind of fighting for the same sort of spots on a bunch of different teams. But there should be at least four or five teams making changes, so we'll see. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of opportunity Probably out there have for to these leave. guys. And I also want to mention, uh, Chris, I agree with you. I think, as always, the first event in Challengers always is a lot of upsets. I think, like, Team War, for example, had a, a, t a, a tricky placing. I think the Spanish team actually played pretty good this weekend. The team that made it in as well. On the finals, Geo and Wiz's team actually made a really good run. Yeah, and they get beating. But you see, yeah. but see, Ben, this is the problem. This is the problem I have with your opinion. Okay. You talk about, like, how some of these top teams have inconsistent placings. Boston Breach Academy got top six. So you know, still consistently the best average placing in Challengers. Did, they get, the, did they get top six? Me. Top six? Give did Boston get top six? There's no way no, Doug's got not. the best. No, I don't He's think got they got the, top six. I think they got like top, got top 16. 12. Yeah, I don't think they got top six this event, Pat. I, I heard think they got top, smoked. I heard, uh, whatever. I, Either way, best average placing in Challengers. 
I will tell you. Oh, right they now. got top sixteen. He probably they, does. They, not they got top twelve. Three. They got top twelve. Are stat. you sure about that stat? I don't know if that stat. Yeah, right, yeah. Man. Doug has the best average placing on land in challengers. Last year, he did because they got they were in third and fourth at like yeah. every event. Well, for okay. those of you guys uh, that like aren't familiar with challengers or maybe even uh, watched it, I uh, just want to give a shout out to the team that got second as well because uh, yeah. they made a run. They were super underrated. I got some people on there that I know, Hamza. I'm a frosty. You yeah, see him in BPO8 sometimes. He's really good. He's been good for a long time. He's a Geo too. really solid AR player. Geo, Geo's uh Geo's kind of new to the scene, but he's also super talented. Wiz has been around. He's an SD star. And then the the pick here is Craze, man. Craze actually got dropped by Boston From Breach Doug, Academy. Yeah. yeah, and he ended up obviously making that run of the finals. So I mean, those guys all came in with something to prove. Um, so congrats to those guys on a, on a great finish, but obviously the stars of the show here, man. Faze fucking black, dude. Yeah, Faze I, don't, fucking I, black. I don't understand Doug because he told me that he was like, yeah, Craze is the next one. Like he's going to the league next. Like I'm picking this guy up. The guy's like a young prodigy. Like, you know how he always talked up. To be like, fair, he said the same about Ghosty and Crimp. Right. And they got and got him to the league. Right. That's that's where I was going with it, Pat. He said this. Uh, he said the same thing about all the other players. And he did. He got those players in the league. But Craze, he dropped them pretty fast. Like Craze, I don't know why they ended up dropping Craze. Or did he leave? Do you know that? Well, you know what happened there, Craze? I, 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 think they, I think they ended up dropping him. Honestly, well, um, they made a they made a quick roster move, right? They're like they knew intentionally they, they wanted ease. They were struggling hard though when they dropped him. Like they were they were you know it's one of those challenger things where they weren't winning, and so they decided to make a change. Yeah, and picked up ease, but they're still. What's your Boston Academy? They're still super inconsistent. I'm a little worried, actually. They gotta blow it up, anyway. Yeah, that they they might need to make some major changes <laughs> to be competitive. Yeah. Well, congratulations to FC Black. Very proud of the team. Uh, they came out and they got that W this weekend. So you I will say, them. I will hate to see if one of these teams, like one of these players on this Phase Black team, make like a one swap for like one of these bottom teams that we know is chalked. Like I would hate that. Because yeah, because it's they're no just offense gonna go to them. Off. Like yeah, there's some of these rosters where it's like one player changing is not gonna fix that team. Um, and so I agree with your initial point where it's like these guys should you know try and use the fact that they work well together and get on a team together. I Agreed. know we want to like talk about the matches and stuff like that, but just like LAT and like Seattle, LAT need to make two changes. Period. I think they. I think if they're looking at Phase Black, they go for Kremp and Kremp or Asim, and then they get like Brack as like another AR with Dan. Um, I wouldn't even then, do that if I'm on Phase Black. They look at, one of them has got to go to Boston. Well, you're not. Yeah, obviously, like they, they it's up to them to make the choices. Mm. I'm more so like looking at it from the organization's POV. Seattle, I think Seattle needs a sub. They need to swap a Booza to an AR again. Kremp, go for him. You can't get him. Try Asim, and then I don't know where you go from there. Um, who else is out there? What were you talking about? What was the other team you just mentioned? Boston? Boston? Yeah. Is Boston going to make a change? I don't know. They, 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 they just got 12th, uh, bro. And, so and Slasher very, had a 1.5 for the loss. Yeah, I think during, they're going to make a change. During the day, there was a shot of the crowd with Kremp having a conversation with Austin. Yeah, I think. saw that. <laughs> yeah, I you got to think, ladies and gentlemen. No way Austin yeah. got caught. Yeah, Austin was in the Austin crowd. definitely wants to drop somebody after Kremp, dropping a 1.4 loser. Kremp, Austin, Austin, was, Austin was listening to the flank last night. I told him, you got to do it at the venue. You just got to meet up with somebody. Talk. I went down to the bar and talked to Clay. We had a we had a Corona. I'm like, yo, you're joining the team for two quick. It is what it is. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's I mean, what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. Said, Literally, I was like, yeah. already my, the job was what, already done. One of my, that's uh, what happened. One of my favorite stories. With, Ian probably remembers this. It was X Games, uh, AW. We were at Buffalo. You remember Buffalo Billiards in Austin? The fucking mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. It's actually Billiards. closed now. Buffalo Billiards Sunday night. You and you and Clay were having some combos. That's all I'll say about that. Whoa, I don't know. Combos. Whoa, he yeah, put you on the spot. About. I ain't never did none of my Wait, what was this? Like that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, was I getting dropped? <laughs> nah, that's some propaganda right <laughs> in there. AW? Tom. That's crazy, nah, bro. Never. Yeah, you wasn't getting dropped at AW. Down. Come on. Yeah, is Ben leaking? Ben might be leaking, bro. Ben might he makes his shit leaking, up, man. He makes his shit up, <laughs> man, for real. Yeah, that's that's that boy, crazy. up. But listen, let's move on. We got uh, we got a few series to talk about today. Obviously, Championship Sunday was incredible, man. A lot of great teams, a lot of great matches. Tournament went all the way down to the wire. Huge shout-out to Boston. I thought the venue looked great. thought the tournament was yeah. great. I know they had problems with the production the first day, but it was definitely cleaned up as the weekend went on. I thought the hero shots were great, like all the um, yeah. uh, all the new shots that they took of the teams and the players and stuff like that. Thought the colleague and everything. I thought they did a great job with that as well. Um, so overall, good weekend, good matches. Uh, first match of the day today to start things off was a elimination match. Minnesota Rocker going up against the Optic Texas. I mean, I'll start things off. Minnesota couldn't keep up with Optic's talent. It, it, nope. it, 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 they just couldn't. It, Optic just straight had more talent than them. 
It, they just had a hard time keeping up, hard time getting kills. I haven't even looked at the score sheet yet, but we'll take a look at it. Yeah, there you go. I mean, you they, bullied just, they, bullied they bullied them. They bullied them. This is a little bit of the red carpet going on here. Yeah, yeah. This was this was the red carpet. I mean, we'll go down, Ben. We'll start with you. What happened with Minnesota Rocker today? Optic Texas. They come out, take care of business. AG man, Pred's been playing unbelievable <clears> for these guys. He's been looking like he's unstoppable. I mean, Ben, where are your thoughts at right now with the series? Uh, my thoughts were, I mean, I I talked about this yesterday. Like, I, I just thought there was a talent mismatch in the series. And Minnesota was going to have to catch up to go on a bad day or have an incredible series from like a Reese or a big wake to win. And, and you know, we got some big wake uh, action in this, but ultimately I think obviously just got more talent. Minnesota, typical top four, but I'll keep it on to you guys on your additional thoughts on the series before I finish off with. I they got, they got tier diff, forward. Ben. It was pretty simple. There's two yeah, tiers tier of diff. teams and Rockers in the tier two and Optics in tier one, and they just got tier diff. I mean, <laughs> like even the control. <laughs> Even the control, I mean, it was winnable for Optic. They kind of threw it away. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone... If you, I, I guess, actually, Ace Ace picked Rocker to win this because uh, he's delusional, but... Um, I mean, no he's one been else doing that all weekend, Rocker and it's been, everybody's been going against Minnesota, and he's... he's I, I, I hope he does it. I hope he does it next event. That's all I'm going to say. Have you seen... the Betty cheese, bro. Have you seen how high he is on a prediction point? He's literally, like, in first by a landslide. Like he's not even close. No, no, he beat me by two, Tom. Let's 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 let's, 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 let's relax. Pat, it's not a landslide. He had twenty six. I said you're at twenty two. Yeah, Tom. Ooh. But look at but Tom, look at the in in result. Like, come on, make sure you get up to speed there. Yeah, I mean, listen, he had twenty seven. I had twenty five. Like, he barely beat me. Oh, so for, okay. So you're making a comeback. You made a comeback today. I guess. Yeah, I was. I would have tied him actually if if Faze had won the event mm. and Breaking Point decided that the tiebreaker would go to who predict the event winner. Oh. So it would have been me. But okay. you know, okay. I mean, it is what it is. But my bad. Buddy. Like I said, I just I don't think Rocker was going to win this series no matter what happened. Um, even if there was bad performances on Optic, so. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty quick one. Mm -hmm. Quick one, Ian. You have any thoughts on the series? I'm not sure uh, how much you, nah. you watched today. It, no, yeah, I, I watched all the series today. Um, I mean, it's just you guys basically got it. The difference in the talent and the team, like they're just a better team. It's just not even close. It's, it's just it's pure imposter syndrome out of uh, Rocker. Like, there's not they're not supposed to be here. Obviously, like they they earned Damn. it. Damn, they they, they, <laughs> they, they earned it, they, bro. They, you they just call them it. challenger they players. Listen, they earned it. That's not they what imposter syndrome is. That's a the wrong definition. Of you that. did. They're, they're I, I know what he meant though. Here, right? I know what he meant. <laughs> they're not supposed to be here. Like obviously, like when you look at the landscape of the league and the talent on some of the other teams, right? You'd expect a team like New York to be here, but they ended up upsetting them and just making a run and. At the end of the day they finally started to play against the top three teams at this tournament and it wasn't even close like it's a win that they were in the top four I yeah agree. it's a it's a win for their organization for the team at the end of the day like they they know they can beat these middle of the pack tiers but man they got a lot of work if they want to contend with uh with any of the top dogs I still I mean, think a I, top four placing for Minnesota Rocker is a massive W for them this week yeah, yeah. no it's yeah, impressive it's a w, that's impressive so w. they they and listen they they beat New York during this major, we need to tip that. That was actually a, I know New York got dead last, but I still think New York's a good team. Um, and they beat LAG, and you know, I, I agree, those points are going to be really key at the end of the season. I still think this wait, Minnesota that was their only two wins, Ben. Uh, yeah, because they lost to Toronto and Optics. Mm. Uh, yeah. bro, I, oh, but I, mean, I forgot. I mean, you, can, lost, you can, you can get, you can win two, you can win two games and get top four, like bro. Wow. That, that's wow. Back in the day, Pat, we had to go through pool plays and go wow. through fucking you bunch of rounds. You can win two games and get top four? That's what I'm saying, man. Jesus. Oh, remember, remember, bro, well, we had to play 12 series to get top four back in the day. Year one where you had the fucking, the double buys, that shit was even crazier. But anyway. Uh, I think for Minnesota, I think, look, they were, they were on a hot map one streak and that kind of ended during this format. I think their S and D is still a little bit iffy. They're kind of 50, 50 in control. Um, but if they keep working on it all the new patch, I think they've got a head and shoulder over some teams below them and they can, you know, for a team like Minnesota, you don't want to be fighting for your champ spot. You want to go into that fourth major on a good amount of points, trying to actually get like a fourth or a fifth seed. And right now they've done a decent amount of work to be in that sort of position. Mm -hmm. Any next steps for Minnesota? You see them making any changes? You think they're going to stay together? I mean, where are you guys heads at with next they, steps with they these need guys? To, they need to figure out. They need a couple of things. First off, I think Lamar had some decent series. Just want to keep it. He's going to see him turn up on land when needed. They need to figure out how to get more consistency out of Reese because I think Linz is great. I think that was a great pickup. Linz is Big their Wakes best player. Linz is yeah. the best player, and Big Wake's got to figure, figure it out. He, yeah, had some, he had some great maps this weekend, but he also had a lot of bad maps. If he can get consistent, they'll get good.
Reese I mean, was dude. on fire going into this uh to this yeah, he was playing with well. those last couple yeah. of matches and then uh, I think at the major he just didn't play up to those standards. So if you were to take Awakening's control map away in this series, he would have had like a point four. Yeah, no he, bullshit. Uh, like he, he had he only did go on that control map. Otherwise his stats would look terrible. I don't know what's real like big wave. Uh, what do you call him now there? Superstar Slayer. Uh bro. oh oh Awakening with the uh, EQ. I call no, him, oh, I, no, Lil Wake. I called oh, him Lil Wake. Yeah, I, call, I called him Lil Wake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I got, what did I call him on the show today? I called him Kitty Pool Wake during the, the watch party thing. Or now, that thing. is, that is nasty fuck? work. Kitty, Kitty yeah, Pool. That, the fuck is that mean? That's a Ben Ben Dahmer. Yeah, where the fuck exactly. did you get Kitty Pool from? I called Big Wake, and I was like, Kitty Pool Wake. Oh, fuck it. I don't no, know what the I, fuck you're talking about. I think you, you saw shades of the Wake that we like to see, but I think maybe it's a confidence thing. Maybe they're not getting him in the right spots, but it's a very AR-dominated game on a lot of maps, and they don't always get that you know, contribution from him. If they can figure that out, I think they'll get more consistent and respawn, which will help them kind of beat a lot of the teams in the tier that they're in. Yeah, I don't know. Big Wake, bro. Uh, he was supposed to come into this team and be like that flex, like Slayer, like just get kills, like be, do what what Draws does, do what Scrap does, do what, you know, everybody has that one person, right? That one player that's kind of just like the kill whore on the team, like get kills. Like that's your job. Like Scrappy says in the interview, right? My job is just to get kills, right? That's That's what I do. I don't know what's going on with Big Wake. He in the back of the day, that that's what he was known for was slaying and getting kills. Now it seems like he's just having a hard time like picking his spots and and just getting the kills. I don't know what it is. I'm not sure what's going on with him. And you see glimpses of it. And when you're watching Minnesota, you'll there there'll be moments where, where Big Wake's like turning up and you're like, damn, he's shitting on him. And you're like, what the hell? And then it's just it's it's like it's like vivid, but very inconsistent. Just a lot of ups and downs. I don't know if it's a team thing. I don't know if it's an individual thing. I really don't know, but. Definitely got to see Big Wake really step it up for these guys because he's supposed to be that that Slayer role for him, and he's not picking up any kills. Well, Tom, was Big Wake ever like the undisputed superstar on any of his teams before? Florida, like, he was a big so like. It, but, or, I mean, but like, he was on yeah, Florida, right? I, I'm saying where he was like the undisputed number one guy, at least going into it. He, his headset was. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, uh, when he was back in MW 2019, when he was popping off, he obviously had Pharaoh. That's five five. Yeah. Skies on Florida. What about like, Boston? I, I just, what about him on I, Boston? I mean, to be fair though, people used to say he was cheating because of how much awareness he had, though. Well, like, you know, yeah, I know, I know. What I, my whole point was, I'm just curious. Like, you know how Ben will understand this in sports when like the number two wide receiver goes to a team and he has to be the number one guy, mm -hmm. but he was performing really well because he was performing really well as a number two, but when he's the number one and like he's focused on. He's not he doesn't number, do the same. He's not number one, though. It's fucking Liz. Well, no, no I'm well, saying, I'm saying going AR, into though. it. Like, going into AR it. AR supposed yeah. to be, no? They uh, thought that he uh, was uh, going honestly, to be the honestly, superstar bro, on the team. Call it like I see it, he's better with games where he can use his headset. Because in Modern Warfare 2019, <laughs> in Modern Warfare 2019, <laughs> that, guy, that, guy, that guy had such good awareness, and it's because he just heard everyone. Oh, that might be the, thing, the biggest back in the top of my mind. But I was fair, bro. He was good. He was good then, too. But in, in Cold War, in this game, I don't think he was that good at, the, at Cold War. Like, he was all right. Well, think about like, it, Ian. Everyone's running him. around silent, bro. Like, if you don't know where they're at because you can't hear them, like, he's just going to get not, caught No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. That is like, it's just, listen, that he's, not a, he's not a player they should think about dropping right now because I think you're just going to make some other team really much better. But wait, wait, wait. What out. team is picking up Wake? If they dropped the Wake, I think there'd be quite a few teams bro, trying to figure they, out they, if they, they can make they, it work. They just got Seattle fourth. doesn't pick up him. They just got fourth. I think they give it another stage and see they're gonna where give they it another stand. Stage. And if they regress, if they regress, then uh, yeah. maybe they look at something. But right now, they're fine. Yeah, they're fine. I mean, fine obviously, right now. when it comes to competing against the top three, I mean, like, you can't even use that as, like, a like a bar that you're trying to reach right now. Like, mm -hmm. every team has, every team outside of the top three has, like, insane amounts of improvements to be made to even be competitive. So, like, you can't just look at one guy because it's, it's not a one man problem right now. Yeah, any thoughts on Optic in the series? I mean, I had mentioned Pred. I just thought it looked really good. He's Pred's been a Pred and Kenny. I mean, especially Pred in this series was just really putting that in every post. series. Every he's probably in the next one too. Yeah, he just Sunday. runs. At, he he literally White just runs City. at people and just wins every fight. It's crazy. Who? Pred. No, Pred. Yeah, he's by far their best player. AG, nah, a AG, AG's got the most annoying play style to play against because this guy is like the most tier one corner off angle player in the entire fucking league. And then he runs at someone and gets a fucking second. Like, I, I, if, dude, if I were probably loose full playing against this guy, because you never know where he is laying down the map or what corner he's fucking playing. Yeah. Guys yeah. master that shit to a fucking T, and you got to respect it. Mm hmm. I mean, any other thoughts on the first series here, guys? Anybody have anything else to say about any of the players, any of the teams, any of the results, anything? 
Okay. Oh, now let's move on. All right, let's move on. Let's go to the next series. Minnesota Rocker, they get eliminated from the tournament. They end up placing top four, so congratulations to them. I don't think anybody had them placing in the top four this weekend, so massive W for them. Let's hop in to the next one. This is the winner's final here. We have Atlanta Phase going up against Toronto Ultra. <clears throat> and again, it's those hard points for Phase that's hurting them. What's up, Pat? I was going to say they smoked them on that sub base. It was bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the sub base was bad. I mean, the Karachi was a close map, but Toronto, again, comfortable in the hard point. The S&D was clinical from Toronto Ultra. They were just running through phase in the search. I don't... They were super prepared, and I I even heard uh, them talking about it on stage about how they you know their hard point was always good. You know they really prepared uh, with their S and D going into the weekend, and it definitely showed. I definitely think their search game was on point this weekend. Thought Toronto was as a whole was just on point. They they looked really really good. We'll go down the list. Uh, we'll start from the bottom to the top. We'll go to we'll go to you, Ian. Ian, what were your thoughts on Atlanta Phase versus Toronto? <clears throat> it seems like Toronto ultra outclassed them in the in the winners final. Yeah, I was saying this before the show. Like, FaZe has obviously got, they've lost before. It's not like they're just winning every event. But this is the first time in a while where it just felt like they were getting bullied. Yeah. Just, like, the confidence on Toronto in this series. I mean, in both series, but especially to start off in the winner's finals. It just seemed like they thought FaZe was dog shit. And it kind of showed. Like, they outplayed FaZe. I don't even think any maps were close, even the Karachi. I, I think the scoreboard makes it seem like it was closer than it was but they just played phenomenal mm -hmm. I, think they out, I think they outplayed phase and it they outplayed phase of champs last year i think it's the last time i've seen phase get outplayed like that they've been like, yeah I, yeah like that's what phase really struggled it was a beat control. down but i, I just think land toronto's teamwork is on an an absolute another level from every other team in the week the way when you watch this team play respawn and even search the way they bait and switch for each other uh the awareness this team has the the mindset their ability to clutch. I mean, they are just so far ahead of everybody else right now. I agreed. Chris, what were your thoughts on the series? Uh, I mean, I think they just shut Simp down. I mean, Simp was uh, probably... He had the damage. His best he was player. just he having a hard time getting kills. Just couldn't finish the kills. Um, they, they looked like they shut him down, and he was prime. He, Simp was a primary reason as to why FaZe was even, like, competitive in respawns against some of the top teams. He was always, like, putting up uh, a lot of numbers and, like, keeping them in the game, but... Um, he obviously didn't have that too good of a series, but um, another player, Abizi, man. Abizi, this game has not been the Abizi from the last games. Obviously, this game, I think, caters to more AR players' uh, AR players play style, and he's obviously a very aggressive player, um, and a, he's more of a submachine gun player, but he just has not been that good in this game, as he was in Modern Warfare 2 or even the last couple titles. So I think if this team even wants to catch up to Rano, we're going to have to see some improvements out of Abizi because right now it's like a... It's like it's like a it's a big diff from him and like a player like Kleenex in terms of the way they they impact for their or they impact their teams. I mean, I, game, I, I wouldn't uh, say he's I wouldn't say he's like bad right now though, Chris. Like he's definitely. He, I'm, well, obviously he's, he's like they're, they're the well, second best team right now. I'm saying yeah. compared to the way to you his, said it, you know, it seemed like that he was yeah. Let yeah. really well, me put you this really way: of course, of course he's not bad. It's Come probably on. the best way to talk about. It. Would you say that Abe's got like a very like like snap on people style play style? You know what I mean? Like, he's always setting pace, and he's trying to snap on people if he's, like, coming off a sprint or coming off a slide cancel. Do you say that's a fair characterization the way he plays? Yeah, I'd say yeah. That, that is, and but he, and he's less like of an eye. Follow-up question is, do you think that play style is very effective in this game right now? I think him no. and Shotzi are going through the same shit right now. They're just running yeah. a sub. They're, they're, they're Similar, just yeah. not, they're not finding, they're not comfortable with their routes or certain challenges. It, bro, th let's be honest. Let's, let's just rip the band. This is an AR heavy game, bro. Period. The MCW is the best gun in the game. It shreds at all ranges. You can do whatever you want with that gun. You can slide cancel around up close in hills with it. You can kill people across the map with it. Medium range. It's 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 got like I think people like a BZ Shotzi, like they're having a hard time getting comfortable. Like everywhere they go, they're probably getting tagged up. I feel like the only time you really see them pop off is in close quarter situations where, like, you know, they have a rotation or they're in good scenarios and good positions. But it's really hard when you're when you're not in those positions. Like, if, if you're in a spot to pick up a cut, like an MCW, just to sum it up, you can do it all with the MCW. You can't mm -hmm, do it all yeah. with the sub. Now, oh. granted, yes, there's been times where people are cross-mapping with a sub and hitting nice shots with a rival, and people are like, oh, ray gun, ray gun, ray gun. <laughs> 
Okay, sure. Yes, people are going to hit good shots sometimes. But the consistency and the power, uh, the, the the MCW on how good it actually, like, bro, it's an AR heavy game. It's a very it's AR heavy, heavy, it's heavy game. It's mainly because of the maps, though. It's like a lot of the time you'll just find yourself with a sub in a position where you actually just cannot do anything. And if you have a sub out and that life, when you need to advance on a certain play on the map, you just can't, you're just useless. And he probably goes through that a lot. Also, another thing that contributes to it is the fucking Grenetti, bro. And I don't know what the solution is. Yeah, but they got a shotgun pistol. Um, yeah, every that's pistol, true. That you every move at the, the speed game. of light. You move fast as fuck with it. Like, people are literally telling people one shot, pulling out their pistol, and just moving <clears> fast as every, fuck, like running at people. Every pistol in the game is broken right now. Um, and I think the only solution they could do is if they made it so, let's say, pistols were completely GA'd. Um, they made everyone run a knife. And they did what they did in rank play. I don't know if it's possible for the CDL rule set, but they actually made... Um, in rank play, the knife is uh, two hit. It doesn't one shot. Now I don't think the the, the pistols don't um, one shot with that muzzle. Like they made all meleeing basically a two hit kill instead of um, instead of one tap. So they could probably do that with a knife. And yeah, it would kind of suck to not have a secondary and the knife to be essentially useless and just be a movement tool. But I think it would just alleviate some of the growing pains that some machine gun players have when trying to engage in in some of these close range scenarios against ARs. Yeah, I, I agree. You can see it, especially on land. I mean, we're seeing maps with eight ARs, guys. I mean, it, Invasion, eight ARs. Terminal, eight ARs. And with occasional people pulling out a sub. I think the only map we'll see people pulling out more than one sub is Karachi on some of those close quarter hills. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, it's it's an MCW game, bro. It's an AR world, and the subs are just living in it. And they have to find ways to adapt and, and, and figure out. How they're going to play this game. I mean, Ben, I heard you say in the watch party, right? Like, BZ's going to have to figure out how to play this game. I think the same goes for Shotzi. I think the same goes for a lot of fast sub players. They're going to have to learn how to be consistent in an AR heavy game like this. <clears throat> and I think they're going to have to start pulling the AR out more. And I think they need to start adding more maps. We have Rio now coming into the equation. You have uh, Greece, who, which I think could be a map that could be added into the equation. And I feel like those maps might even favor subs more. Because let's be honest, the maps right now are, one, dirt shit. These maps are terrible. We see, I felt like we watched Invasion for like 70% of the tournament. I don't know if anybody else felt like that. Um, but I feel like we're playing the same maps, super repetitive, and they're super AR heavy, the way they're laid out. We need new maps. And we need them Found fast. Out. I also heard that they're designing maps just for competitive. I heard that there's maps being designed right now. Huh? I hope we get those season. I hope we get those season two. We can put them in like April and May. I'll say though, Tom, on the four AR thing, I will say like, especially if you want your player to make plays, I know lightweight with the AR is a little bit better. Now we saw a lot of people running it this weekend. I, I would say that like, if you still want your sub player to be applying pressure, you don't necessarily situation want people pulling out four ARs, but I agree. Like you watch like, um, terminal sometimes four ARs, you watch invasion sometimes four ARs. It's just really hard to fucking like make any plays with a sub unless you just hit the greatest fucking shots of all time across yeah, the map i, I heard i heard hotels coming back in like an actual update would you guys play hotel again oh like, no you want to hotel I, yeah I, I, hotel I, I, play good, oh, no. I I hotel was, good luck I with no snake good, good good luck playing that map with no two, with no, no more than two pumps I thought, I thought i thought hotel was an actual good map and <laughs> sub machine oh, gun, no. for some machine guns it was a good map that, nah, that, that was a fun that map to run a i thought i thought hotel map that map that sucked. hotel nah, that, was was i hated watching that map i hated watching that, watch that map in every game mode in the chat run a fucking poll in the chat it's i hated watching yes, that map bro. in every hotel, game mode be yes, bro. Hotel with spawns were also horrible was, on that map and uh, they yeah, would yeah, still yeah, be horrible slaying the spawns, no, 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 no. spawns right now are just spawns absolute were, perfection huh pat spawns i mean that's what i'm saying tom imagine the spawns on that map plus the problems of this game mw2 spawns are better than the current spawns we have in modern warfare 3 and i will die on that fucking hill they are fucking atrocious on this game right now. They're bad. They are bad. I play the game every day, and I've spot on, for example, on Invasion, the new, the new, what is it? P4. 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 Yeah. Bro, I, 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 I've had my whole team spawning in courtyard with the other courtyard in Palace with the whole other team yeah. also spawning in Palace. They spawn in the same spot. You, you, know, you know what they're the nice on, though? X Defiant. Because <laughs> oh, <there we> <laughs> I worked on them, baby. Delayed. What? X Jesus delayed. Christ. Can I can I add something in on the on the whole gun debate? By the way, yep. So because I I saw some people uh, in your chat talking about it, right? Like, oh, mm -hmm. Preb was frying though. Because we're talking about like a BZ struggle, Shotzi struggles. Preb AG I, ran an AR for most. Well, yeah, well, well, I, that's I, where I, half the time well, he had well, so an AR. That, AG that, was running an MCW. Think, I think right now, even though like you guys are right with that, the game you like as a sub, if you're in a BZ or a Shotzi or whoever else, you almost have to let. The aggressive like flex ar player right like a drowsy like a kenny open the map up for you first 
and then you can make a play. Yeah. And even when Preg was running a sub, like you guys said, he's engaging like the first fight on his dick. Like he like he's not playing a like a BZ or like a Hydra running at you. He's getting the freebie and then chaining it. Right. Because that's how you kind of have to play. I think he understands well, that. He um, understands. Whereas the like game a really BZ, well. a BZ and other fast crack subs, unless they update the game and something changes, they can't be super in your face running around because like you said, you just get melted. You have he's to get that what? opening. On his dick well, nub. Well, like I said, watch how Toronto. <laughs> you're doing tricks on mine oh. right now. Watch how Toronto <laughs> what? And that's what Simp does too, by the way. Sorry, yeah. to, to finish it off, yeah. Simp is like the opposite of a BZ, very methodical. He'll really like slow play for that first kill and then <clears throat> explode, pause. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's what they, you just gotta I mean, be, scum play like you gotta that play too. a little differently. Scum play yeah. like that too back yeah, in the day. Scum play, yeah. Go ahead, Ben. Scum was always no, exploding on path like, for sure. I mean, to, to, <laughs> it never to, happened. To, I don't know what you're saying. That's why I also think the bait and switch is so effective to set up those aggressive players. Like just hitting that, that shoulder semi or sliding through like, you know, dark alley and then chilling together, like dragging out away him, like all the teamwork shit Toronto's so good at. I think they were they so good at it. A little bit better at it and just stop relying on some solo plays, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. And then I think overall, I mean, guys, Toronto looked pretty comfortable in this one. I, I agree with you, Ian. I think this is the first time I was watching a series with Atlanta Face and I was like, yo, like, what is going on? Like, you could almost tell they had no chance, right? That's yeah, what it felt like. Yeah. It felt, it, it felt like it was just dead. I mean, the first map, I was on the edge of my seat. The SD is when it really started to kick in. Like, bro, like, what is going on? Like, they're literally just running through them. Obviously, they win the control, and then we get to the sub base, and Toronto, they just put the nail in the coffin. That's when I'm start, I start sitting to myself, I'm like, bro, it's it's what's going on with Atlanta Faze's hard point? You know, like, what's going on with these guys? What, what why, do you guys think is the biggest they... problem in hard point for FaZe right now? Um, I think it's kind of what you guys were talking about. Yeah, it, might, well, it could I, be what I, we're I talking think, about. I think, I think their setups are ass. Like, well, yeah, I was going to say, like yeah, that happened on Skid Row, too. I feel like every time they got a control, like a, a solid control of Hill, they just don't get the right kills or they don't prioritize the right cuts. And then like a team that knows what they're doing overflows it and then creates space. It happened on Skid Row, like you were saying, Pat, a lot of the time. Like, for example, there was a point where I remember Simp was laying on his belly by the dumpster on P2. He gets the first kill on the guy trying to cross fence and then sprints forward and dies the guy ticket booth. As soon as you die to that guy ticket booth, that creates the opening for you to get on the dumpster to cross P5 and start like pressuring the guy in hill so he can't peek. If Sip gets that first kill and just tucks himself in the corner, allows the whoever's in the hill to help him out, team shot that cross instead of over aggressing, they hold that hill. They probably hold all of it. But for example, that that's just one example. Boy, that happens cooking all with that. the time. Bro, they, 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 they do got to get way more I disciplined on rotation. All day, bro. Like I, I tell, I'm telling you, I know my shit when it comes to this stuff. I mean, listen. I'll give you an example. So the map we're talking about, sub base, bro. They are so fucking. I know this hill is now done, and we're never gonna have to fucking see it again. The ramp hill, bro. This team will lose. P will not get P threes. They rotate to P four, and they get literally instant broken on P four, and they're getting funnel middle map. This team. What map got vetoed though? Here. Uh, why, like, why do they end up playing them you. on sub base? Because it's Toronto's best hardpoint map. I'd assume it might have been terminal. I don't know. I, I mean, Toronto's good at a lot of hardpoint maps. Yeah, so but I, this is their best one. They're 4 0, and their wind diff, like their wind, point wind diff, is like 90 something. So it's they're like. They're also amazing at Skid Row. So it's kind of like a pick or poison thing. Yeah, but uh, they ended up playing Skid Row. I thought that was a lot uh, closer. Faze actually been invasion hardpoint, interestingly, against Toronto. Yeah, so my my guess is probably like in scrims they probably played them on evasion. They're not confident on it, but yeah. You know. well, I mean, well, well, from what I heard, they were running everybody in scrims. They should have been undefeated in scrims. I listen. I've talked to people about teams. Like I think these, these two teams always battled in scrims well, but Toronto's obviously clear the the Tino's ahead and fucking dominated pretty much all maps except for that invasion control. So mm -hmm. yeah. Agreed. I mean, guys, any other final thoughts on the series here? Th definitely thought Toronto looked like uh, just a stronger team, without a doubt. Uh, yeah. I, I felt like after this series, we all knew Toronto was winning after watching this. We all felt it. I mean, I felt it. I, I can't really I thought there was a guys. chance FaZe could, could win, come back, like just have a get some momentum after I being saw, optic. I, but... I, saw, I saw it coming yesterday after the hard point and realizing the veto process that was about to happen. I knew they were going to get some. They were not going to get good maps that um, FaZe was going to look dominant in. Mm -hmm. Any other final thoughts, guys? Anybody? No, nope, let's move on. All right, let's move on. This was Roll the, out the red loser carpet final. <laughs> we got Atlanta phase getting the rematch against Optic Texas. I know a lot of people uh, were saying cheese in the first series, so they got a little rematch here going into Championship Sunday. 
and Atlanta Faze are able to take down Optic Texas. Three to one, Optic was able to take the control. But let's take a look here at the stat sheet. And uh, as you can see, it was AG who was trying to hold these guys together, man. Brad was trying to do it, but it wasn't enough. It Tom, what did I say yesterday? What did I say? Pat, you what said yesterday that if Kenny, Kenny doesn't have a good series. Yeah, you said that you need other people <sighs> to pick up the slack if Kenny or Pratt is not going to have a good series, that you said. You see, you want to start seeing other people pick up the slack here. Pat, yeah. what happened, Pat? What happened? And I'm just afraid there's not another superstar to pick up the slack on this squad, Tom. Um, think, well, Pratt again, Pat. still did his thing. Um, Damage-wise, I don't know where Shotzi went. He's 2,000 behind everybody else. Um, I don't know what he where he was at on the map other than just running around and dying, but a point seven is unacceptable out of your franchise player in arguably the biggest rivalry that we have in Call of Duty currently. Um, I you know I this team reminds me of that Seattle team, obviously way more talent than the Seattle team, but the 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 composition reminds me of the Seattle team where they're just relying on the slang of two guys, and if those two guys aren't frying versus the good teams, you're not going to get a win because. The way Dash is playing currently, I personally don't like it. I feel like he's being way too much of a hill, like a reserved, like hill bitch player. Um, and Shotzi's just extremely inconsistent. They need um, to get shots. They need to get Shotzi in the hill so he can just bro, stop running. Yeah, I need Dashy to be way matchup. more active, bro. Way more active. I'm, bro, I'm tired of this Dashy sitting respawn. back playing like insight. Bro, like Dashy needs to play like Dashy. This matchup is not hard point. It's control and S and D. This optic team. Has a huge problem in the game mode. They have a tough time winning situations. Control's the only one they won. They won the control, man. They got waxed in both hard I know, points. But they hard point three, is the they, problem. Uh, bro, bro, okay, you want me to, They played three times this year. They have the hard points phases one. Nah, the three. online one. Don't Are you care. Listen to me? Are you listen Don't to me? care about the three? online one. Two of those were on land. Yeah. And you want to know how many SDs? <laughs> Stand on that business, man. Okay, Don't care about the online one. Stand on that shit, man. It's three matches. How many SDs do you think Optic beat beat them in? Don't know. Don't care. Fucking Shots at a point seven. They don't have Ben. Bro, the issue in this series, yes, we can talk hard point to the death. We can talk about how Optic probably shouldn't pick terminal. Fine. At the end of the day, the reason that fucking Optic is losing this series is because they are not able to overcome <clears throat> the S and D's. That I think is the biggest issue in this matchup right now. So I have a question for you guys. They yeah. This is genuine all too. Smoked. Can you go back to the scoreboard? Yep. I'm here now. Uh, Damn, you want to see it again? Ugh. No. Uh, do you guys think it's more concerning? Right in this series, obviously it's just one series, first major, but that Shotzi barely had ten thousand damage, right? Or the fact that Fred had what twenty more kills than the rest squad. of his team, and he basically was the second, I mean third, third highest damage. Like I, I know he's second, but it like, do you think that 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 is concerning at all? This is that his hate. damage is so low for the amount of kills that he has. Mm -hmm. I mean, I you get where you get where I'm going with this. Map one, though. Map, was, map one, they got no, I, I, one bad. I, no, yeah, but, that, but that happens. I know that's what I'm saying. Can I like, see if map you look at the scoreboards, stuff? Yeah. if you look at the scoreboards, even online, that happens a lot. But that's just a genuine question. I don't know if you guys think that that's I, concerning I or not. I think the and we've talked about uh, this a lot I, in the show, Ian. We don't even need to talk about this. I already know the answer. Yeah, go ahead. It's it's a literally pacing issue. Their search and destroy is 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 terrible. Right, that's an obvious one. The hard point, um, they're pretty good at it. But for the most part, when they struggle in hard point, it's pure pacing issue. If you look at the stats of both of these, Shotzi struggled in both hard points. And a lot of the time, he's not, well, he's just probably running into a blender. He's his team. Bro, his it's team the same stats thing are, with a BZ, bro. It's, well, they're, so that, they're, they're in the so same that, spot right so now. So that takes you, me to, that takes me to my second point. Because I, I agree with you, Chris. That's what I thought. I feel like that's Optic's biggest issue. I don't think it's, it's control or SND. Like, yeah, we can talk about the modes, but I think Pred and Shotzi are like, out of all the top teams, look at, look at, look at, look. I see Ben waving his hands Brother, up, man. They're five and ten in SND. You don't think SND is a fucking no, problem? No, that is that. Ben, the main, ben, the ben there's problem. a bigger, it, there's a bigger issue, though. Oh, ben searches. They, they, they are about as far apart. Bro, this apart. team shouldn't they, be a they, Nezlo they're on two team, different book. They're in two different books right now. They're not even on the same, they're not even in the same book when it terms of playing together. Look at Kleenex and that. Envoy. Even look at, we know Simp and Abizi. But they're a lot closer than how Shotzi and Pred play. That's my point. Mm -hmm. So, so someone's always gonna sh like. I, I don't want to make an excuse for Shotzi, but somebody's gonna shit the bed if they can't get on the same page. It's just gonna happen. It's pacing issue, bro. It's that's all it is. Like Shotzi is running out there a lot of the time, trying to make a solo play. 
on their breaks. He's probably the first one to engage when, again, we just talked about he shouldn't be the first one to engage. He should be waiting to have space cleared, you know, with his AR players. And Kenny obviously struggled this um, yeah. this series. And so if he's obvi- if Kenny is struggling, Shotzi's going to struggle even more than he usually yeah. does. That's and to stand on business real quick, Chris, let me just go ahead and, and oop you real quick to Ben. What do you think in SND, right, what you're talking about? How many times do you think that Shotzi and Pred probably fucked up around going for a trade, trying to rotate to a bomb because they are just on two different planets. Or, That's what it boils or, down or, to. It's or, not SND. Yeah, it's, it's a, what's I, actually I happening in the rounds. It's the actual problems that are I, in, I mean, within I mean, their I squad. I think they're SND specific issues. One is they really suck at like bomb down situations on both sides, right? Either trying to retake a bomb site. They're one of the worst teams in the league. I think a retaking percentage wise. They're also one of the worst teams in the league at actually winning around when they plant bombs. All right, all right. Now let's now let's now let's think about this here from an objective standpoint, regardless of game mode. What what when you break a bomb site? What are you like? What is that looking like in a respawn game mode? It's breaking a hill. When yep. you're attacking Teamwork. a bomb site, what are you doing? Or when you're defending a bomb site, what are you doing? You're holding a hill. Defending, yeah. you're doing, or holding a hill, point, right? Yeah. A lot of these, a lot of these issues are the same, right? For example, in S and D, if you remember the high rise versus phase, how many times did Optic get first blood off of like a play from Pred or Shotzi where they got through and made a play, got a first blood? How many times did they capitalize that on that? Not very often. Why? Because whenever these players are engaging and creating this creating openings they're not pouncing they're not they're not taking advantage of the space they're creating sure it might be less of a problem in hardpoint and they're maybe more consistent at realizing the situation in that game mode but at the end of the day it's very similar and they're they're struggling because of it period like they need to get on the same page they need to find ways to to utilize Shotzi and his dynamic with the rest of his team because to be honest, I just don't I don't know if he's going to be able to tame back his playstyle and I don't think his playstyle in general is that bad. I think his teammates just need to pick up the fucking pace cuz a lot of the time regardless if you might think he's a scammer or not, he's trying to make plays but no there's no follow up or maybe he's just not communicating. Yeah, with but his half teammates. the time it's over challenge. I hate that mindset though. He has to change his playstyle some to accommodate yeah, the teammates yeah, that yeah, he has. Especially when Dashie's playing this way. I personally hate the way Dashie's playing on this squad right now. I don't know about you guys, but I like I don't think Dashie like, Yeah, I, I hate everybody. this. Nah, yeah, he's playing, he's playing that's he's how playing. you play. But first I off, think, first off, bro, that's how Octane Dashi, plays. Dashi yeah. has far, yeah, that's but Dashi like has far too much talent to play the way that that he's currently playing on the squad. Dashi um, used to be the I damage think dealer. him, yeah, but I think yeah, him I pacing. I think if Dashi paced up and Shotzi paced down, this squad would be way better. I hundred percent way agree better. I agree with that. Bro. You got I Shotzi running around like a maniac ch- over challenging when Pred doesn't play that way. And you got Dashy playing super slow, just being a hill bitch when he's probably got the best shot on the team. Yeah, he's so he's I, too talented to be but playing like I, that. Pat, you're right with that, but shot like Dashy's. I personally think not even in this game over the last year and a half, he's went more to that style, Talk like an yeah. octane. Yeah, just oh, not not, not hill kid. About just, Brandon. No, I'm talking about Dashy. Okay, you're talking about. But Brandon. what I'm saying is, he could still play at this pace, play exactly how he played this event. If Shotzi and Pred got on the same page, because someone is always scamming between one of those two and putting him in bad positions. Bro, the thing is, though, why do you think Sam even... was so good on LAT? The thing yeah, is, though, but Sam, the Sam though, also was able to calm those. So, like Sam playing slow made a little bit more sense because he also was the main communicator on the squad. Like, right like now, think about, right uh, you, you think about a couple the clips, man. He was good at calming, but they also, were just a really good. Whoa, team yeah, but he was, yeah, but he was also but, the but main also, calmer on the squad. Like, guys, go, go ahead, Chris. Go you ahead, Chris. also have to look at the game that we're playing. This isn't the game where the subs roam, like in like slay. This is the game where the subs get into like spots and just like hide in corners and play tight angles. Yeah, right? that's why wanna, Pred playing that wanna, way is best. Like, you don't want to just Shotzi run, you has to accommodate. Exactly, you don't want to just be running around and like trying to push out all these cuts. You just need to hold, like get because we talked about it, right? A lot of these lanes, a lot of these gaps on these maps are so like detrimental for an SMG player that you're more likely to be caught out in these openings when trying to transition lanes and roam that you're essentially just exposing yourself to get picked. If he's just like plays more patient and chooses his routes a little bit better, where he's transitioning less from like building to building, for example, he'll probably find a lot more success. So we need more dashy roaming because it's more advantageous for him. Look at Scrap. 
right? Sc- scrap you or what scrap Brandon's is not now? Gonna, Brandon's not going to play. Okay, that way, no, no. Though. What what yeah. scrap is now is what Dashy was before. Dashy used to have like fucking ridiculous KDs, absurd damage in maps, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He was very, he was always very Porter, aggressive. Porter was always a slower guy, especially when they teamed okay, together. Yeah, right? but that's that's the point. Like he's we're not getting that out of him. And then obviously, I think Shotzi's just playing the submachine gun role, like wrong on this game and he needs to slow the fuck down and play a little bit more like fred at <clears> least think about the, the maps we're talking about points. like think yeah. about why we're talking about abizi having bad games or you know, any of these players because they're playing these open ass maps where you can't you just get put in the blender if you run around like a maniac like right. you so, just, it's just I, it's just I, straight I, up hold on can i expand that real quick pat do you and this i'm gonna go to chris first on this chris do you he'll talk in my chat about this and now having seen as weekend played out do you think the other issue for optic is they have a very like small map pool. I know they tried to expand it with a couple of maps this weekend. They started playing Invasion Control for the first time or playing sub base. You think like, in fact, they don't really play Karachi Hardpoint. They don't play Skid Row Search. You know, they still have some other maps you, to work on. You think that kind of killed them? It, it's it Toronto in phase? Obviously, Their map pool is like, dude, if you look at the map pools of all these teams in the top three, their map pool is the weakest. Phase is the second weakest and obviously Toronto is the strongest. Like, there's no surprise to that. But also, just like, Looking at it from the maps, it would make no sense that these guys don't like Karachi because Karachi is a map where subs are better. Like subs actually maybe have a little bit more room to work because it's literally red simulator. Yeah, it's the only and, map. And they're not playing it. So, I mean, obviously they they just need to work on the way they, they look at the game in general because, yeah, their hard point's pretty good. But a lot of the time it's coming off the back of like performances from Fred and Kenny that obviously when we didn't get one of those today, it's 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 uh, a completely different story. So Call that. Can, can I uh, just finish my, my point on the dash thing, why I like it on this team? Yeah. So, because I, I do agree with what Chris, with what you and Pat are saying. The issue is, and it's been like this for as long as we've been playing, especially when you have two AR players, right? You're going to have one who plays more the main, more traditional, slower. You look at the top team, Toronto right now, that's insight. And you're going to have one that plays more aggressive, Right, he needs to make a little bit more high impact plays on the map. Right, he's got to move around, pick up more cuts. On this team, respectfully, Dashy is unbelievably talented. Kenny needs to be, which he has been, that AR. I'm taking Kenny ten out of ten times on making the correct impact plays over Dashy because that that's Kenny's that's his strength. Bro, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's his mind. Dashy's strength is his shot and his skill. I don't disagree with you. I, just I don't like think Sam. Kenny, just like I don't Sam, think Kenny should change anything. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, Damn, my but, bad, Sam. But this I mean, team yeah, does true. not have miss. to cater to that. Like, like, like I know should. that works for Insight they should. in they Toronto. Should cater no, to no, but, no, 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 no. I'm saying I think that works for some teams because that's Insight's natural play style. That's not Dashy's natural play style. This team doesn't have to only play that way. Like there's only there's not one correct way to play. I think this team could have Dashy and Kenny playing a similar role as long as the whole squad is on the same page. Bro, bro, I also, agree. Kenny should still play the way he's playing. Don't get me wrong. Kenny should get, be that they guy. They slay by fifty and lose if they both did that. Bro, they would, bro. but but that's what I think. That's what I think. Like they don't have to. Like other I people can get in the that, fucking hill. Look at I the map for playing. I just want to give Dashy his roses. That's all I'm saying. Bro. I think he's kind of taking the back seat, but I think that he's definitely taking the back seat. I, I think. I, I think, in the grand scheme of things, if his teammates play better and play. They, they play more fundamentally correct. It's going to amplify his game. But I think he is swallowing his pride, and he's he's trying to make it well, easier for his teammates. Well, he needs to spit that shit up. Uh, throw that shit up. I just bro, think bro, he's bro. trying to make it easier for his teammates. So he needs I, to be I, that I like guy. That. I like that. Dashy, bro. You guys like, are looking at the game. Just be that guy. That's fair. That's fair. You guys are looking at the game so, like, objectively wrong, though, because, like, yes, okay, there is ideal scenarios where, like, oh, somebody's playing the hill. Somebody is playing slower, getting cuts. But, like, that's only Bro, like half look at, the game. Look, that's holding a setup, right? Chris, that's Chris, it's not even this game, though. Let me finish. Let me finish. Fault, let me finish. Let me finish. That's that's like when you're holding a setup, right? Those things might come into play when you're holding a setup, right? And like you have, you have the room to kind of do what you want. But when you're on the other end, the other half of the game, breaking. There's no fucking role when you're, it comes to breaking a hill. Everyone needs to be on the same page and engage and your play style. All that shit goes out the fucking window. Everyone needs to contribute in that aspect. And if he and if if they're playing a completely different game, it doesn't matter if somebody's play style is slower or faster. That shit does not matter when breaking a hill. You guys, you got, you just got to get the fuck in there when you need to. It's it's completely irrelevant. Go, but my that still I, matters. See, I disagree. Go, go look yeah, at go, go go look at all of the all of the high champ winners in the last decade, and go and go look at their recipe. Why try and reinvent the wheel? 
You look at you look at NYSL last year. Skies slow traditional AR. Okay, that's there. Priesta was the flex, the guy making the impact plays on a map. That's what he was doing. Yeah, but that squad look, had dominant subs. You look they at won. LAT. Priesta wasn't really you playing look at like LAT. Kenny. Octane traditional slow AR. You look at Phase the year before in Cold War. Uh, Celium slow AR. Like, I don't, it, I don't give Cell that same title. Like, I don't think he plays like Insight and Skies. I think he's. Bro, you it, they don't play the exact different. same, but you it's they're still they're year. still you in the same. They're still the same these, style of play. You could say some of these players are slow, but like if I still remember Octane, he was still putting up fucking high damage and still put getting up a getting I mean, a lot I of kills. Yes, I think you're both right. I think slower. everybody's right. You guys but are like, kind yeah. of agreeing with each other. Like, it's, bro, it's, I, I agree, Ian, with you that that's how a team should be laid out, right? You have your slow AR, your more aggressive AR. That's the, what the, the goal like, should be. Right, that's the goal. That's the but, goal. And then, Chris, I also agree with you that there's certain situations where, you know, people need to be able to know when to play fast and know when to play slow. It doesn't matter who you are. You need to know yeah. the situation at that's hand. Half of the, that's half of the game. Yeah, Enable to explain right. one half. I'm explaining the other half. But at the end of the day, bro, man, we're it's Whatever, Chris, that whatever was good gun, shit, man. Whatever gun you have in your hand, bro, like you just got to do what you got to do. Like, yeah, there's natural play styles and there's tendencies, but like ultimately, I think those are flaws. And right, even though if a team, even if a team is like hype, like the best team in the game, there's still always going to be room and improvement. And like, if you, if, if in a perfect world, you would get 25% out of everybody. And sure, it might look that way on paper when a team wins, but there's, there's clear superstars on every team for a reason. And those guys are definitely contributing more. You can argue that that's their role. But that's just how the that's just the way it is, man. Yeah, I mean, and God Rex was a slow AR and it dropped him, picked up a faster one. Yeah, God Rex used to run the wrong way. He just it retired, man. But yeah, I, I will agree I keep with it you. Honest Pat. On the flank. Pat, I will agree with you. I, I think that should get in the mix more. He's he's so yeah, talented. I would, yeah. I, sometimes I hate when I see him like playing a spawn or holding a spawn and dropping a trophy on himself, just kind of sitting there, L trigger, and I'm like, bro, this is literally bl big bluesy baby. Like hit a slide cancel, get in there and, and do what you do best, you know? And you see you know what he can do when you watch him play. We're talking about very... we, like we've been talking about Dash that he's had the best shot in COD for years. Yeah, and we're, we're just watching, watching him hold a fucking L trigger. Like it's hit some slide cancels, getting get mixy. I think that would help the squad a lot. I just think I'd rather his other players back. fix their style than him. Well, Shotzi has to fix his style no matter what, but I still think Dashi could be more active because otherwise Dashi's sitting back watching Shotzi just run around like a chicken and Pred laying on his stomach. Like, that ain't going to work. Yeah, no. I mean, listen, despite all of that, and I thought Optic was, you know, after last weekend looking a little bit shaky, they still got top three at this front, which is typical. So. Who'd they beat? At this tournament? It was a good yeah. event for them, I think. They beat Rocker uh, and Surge. That's it, right? Uh, in Miami, but Miami obviously bombed out of this one too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just it, Pat, it's just his format, bro. I know what you're about to say, but like the form, this isn't fucking CWL where you play the fucking group stage. In the no, that's bracket, what I'm saying. Like, I still want to see more out of him. Like, I know, but it's just, to me, it wasn't still, that impressive of a, a top of, thir a third, a third. They, they beat all the shit yeah. teams. To, to yeah. me, they've shown enough that they're like in the top conversation. I don't. They no, they're Toronto for sure yet. top four. I mean, that's they not play argument. Toronto actually this stage. Uh, they play Toronto and New York to actually close out phase two. So or stage two. So it won't be till March until we see them play Toronto for the first time. Um, but I would say if you're an optic fan, considering you made two changes, phase made one change, Toronto made one change, a little bit easier. They still have some stuff to figure out, but optics definitely hasn't lost an insane amount of ground. Those top two teams points wise and can definitely catch up on this uh, new no, matter. Going in the yo, yo, Ian, if we, if we play with this optics format back in the day, we, we might've averaged top two. They would have been looking at me like I was Bill Russell <laughs> and this shit, man. For real. Beating Rocker Surge in Miami for top three? Like, also, Pat, with, the, Pat, with the dub, Pat, they would have... Shit. Pat, also, Pat, also bring on one more thing. Pat, what was your prediction for Optic before this event? To get dead last and shit. I mean, they That's might as well tech. have... Nah, what? They, what do you nah, mean? Nah, they got Pat, top they, three. They play well, hey, Pat. Hey, play I well. did... Think about it this way, though. I did predict a top four team to get dead last, so I wasn't wrong. It was just the wrong top four squad. <laughs> it was the New York uh, Subliners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, so you gotta think. You gotta think. I was expecting an upset. It was just the wrong team. We always yeah. say you're never wrong. You're just early. Sometimes you're just wrong, so it's all good. No, I was, I was just early. Because it could still happen next event. Man. 2032, Optic's gonna get top 12, and Pat's gonna be like, "Told y'all." I mean, I mean, if they if they come back I to the next event, and, and Pred is the one who switched his uh, style gone. up, and Dashy's still playing the same, yeah, they might get top 12. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, do you guys have any other thoughts on the Atlanta Phase Optic Series? We stayed on that one for, for a long time. Can I, can, I, can I bring up one thing? Which yeah. is Damn, actually, how many things can, you got to can, bring up? I, I'm plenty, bro. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, a typical rebound out of Atlanta Phase. They were actually 0-4 uh, to Hardpoint last two series before this series. And we talked about the watch party how important map one 
was, and they actually played phenomenal in that terminal hard point. I know I've controlled like a couple of setups, but FaZe did a good job, like, you know, playing the terminal cheese, doing a good job pinching and trying to flip those security spawns. And they dominated that first map to get all of the momentum they lost from the previous series, getting slammed by Toronto like 10 minutes earlier back in. So tip a lot of them to get back in the mix. Oh, by the way, Dashi is averaging the least amount of first bloods in the league. Get that guy in the mix. In all game modes. Get him in the mix, man. It's big Brucey, man. He's just kind of hard back. to get first bloods when you got Shasi on your team, dog. That's true. Shasi's dying right away. You're not wrong, but you got like four seconds to get one. They, or they, also, they also played like a lot of invasion search. They played a lot of like they played a lot of maps where uh, the, the where he's gonna play on the map is gonna be tough to get first bloods on some weird shit's going down. Mm -hmm. uh, any other thoughts? Any other final thoughts, guys, on on that one on that on that series? Oh, Shasi's averaging the least amount of damage on the whole squad. But, but probably has the most engagement. Something to think about. Uh, I have one more thing, which is if I see Optic taking extended time off this week, I'm going to lose fucking exposure. But let's see what, what you going to do to him, Ben? What would you do Bro, to I'm him? Gonna fucking, I got annoyed. I got annoyed in January on this shit. And, like, they had a really good start in this one. Like, bro, new patch. Like, fucking hunker down. Get it going. They have an opportunity with the talent on this team to win the next event. Let's fucking get it done. Hey, some people in the chat are saying Ben Puck. Guys, we got a whole other. We got the best of seven grand finals left. I know. I, Optic got eliminated. He said Ben Paul. He said, yo, get this shit over with. What's, what's <laughs> um, but now nah, we got one more series, guys. Everybody hold your horses. No putt just yet. We got the grand finals. We got Toronto Ultra going up against Atlanta Phase. And to be honest with you guys, man, this is just the same story of the first series that they had in the winner's final. I feel like it's the same exact thing. Clearly, Toronto Ultra is just the better hardpoint team. Granted, Atlanta Phase. Probably should have won the first hard point. The last Karachi, they, they, the P2 hill, they got broken on. I, I know they early rotated to it. And then the skid row was also a very close match. It's back and forth. Streaks are raining hell. They, like, it was a battle in the hard points in the grand final. Like, I definitely thought FaZe could have <laughs> took the hard point in the finals. But Toronto definitely outplayed them. We're the better team today. They deserved it. And uh, I think it's a similar story from the first series. Just seemed like uh, after the hard points... Toronto just blended them in the searches. Like their S and D is insane. I don't know what they um, did what to their we, S and D. What do we say about search, bro? What do we say about search? It wins you tournaments. So S and D wins you. Bro, wins they, you were, they were just bro, simply the better at, bro, team. Looking at these vetoes, Fate or Ultra got their two best hard. I was talking about it yesterday. Skid Row and Karachi are the both are both of uh, Ultra's best Jesus. S and Ds after the break. They haven't lost them, and they got them both in this series. You, uh, they're they're definitely the better hardpoint team, right? They beat them in like four of them. At our, no, yeah, what was it? Four of them or three of them mm -hmm. now? But dude, they're also fucking better at search. Yeah, they, Insight they, was Insight cooking, had a one point, Yeah, I was gonna say Insight had a one point four two in the grand yeah, final. Yeah, he was like cooking, bro. It was like Holy every fuck. map. He was world star. Also, was I, think it's, I think it's interesting that Phase lost the series four one. Yet three of them are positive. Well, I mean, control. two hard points control. went down to yeah, the, the last. Yeah. are close. They just got outplayed on them. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't know. It's still it's still weird to see, bro. <laughs> Scrap had 17 fucking K damage. Yeah. Dude. Holy yeah. Fuck. He, he is definitely one player who is not afraid to get in the mix. He, every time Bro. he comes off spawn, he sprints to the nearest cut, jumps the corner, and just chows it every single time. That, he just does crazy. the same thing he's every a, time. He's an insta kill or an insta one shot. Like, hey, every Pat. time he spawns. Yo. Toronto Ultra has played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven series since the beginning of this year, and they have not lost a hard point anywhere less series. Well, like 12 and 0. They only lost that's to that Boston game. That was, that was That's their only loss at all. And that was that, like, Scrappy came on the flink after and was like, ah, I ignored that entire series. 15 of 16 hard points that I, we ever seen. I mean, we've seen some dominant, like, ammo tricks, but these guys Bro, are how, to fuck level how, now. How many S and Ds has Toronto lost since returning from Christmas break? Uh, Maybe, they, like, one? They might actually None? be... Yeah, <laughs> to Thieves. They lost a game five to Thieves. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Dude. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Around around eleven. Around these, 11 bro, around these guys, eleven. Not only have search. these guys not lost hard points, but like, dude, the S and D's up there too. Like, these guys are just they're unbeatable right now. Holy fuck. Yeah. I wonder if the hard point update God though will damn. change will change their dynamic. Well, I mean, one hills, thing that's definitely spawns. gonna change is streaks, bro. Playing for streaks is gonna be so fucking important, bro. Mm -hmm. It's gonna change the game. I mean, like you no saw how other. that won them two two hills on Skid Row because yeah. they streaked them they out. They streaked it, and, that, and, and that's when tro trophies can block them. And again, I don't know what happened with Phaser. I don't know why they didn't have trophies on hill. Maybe they just didn't have them. But I mean, I feel like you know if you know it's going to a P five hill and you're a trophy player, you should try and save your trophy. But, I mean, I really don't know what, what happened. They didn't have a trophy either time, and they just got cruise missiled out. But um, I that's going to be a really big change, bro, really big change. I mean, even now, like, sometimes people are playing for streaks, and I'm like, eh. 
you know, the missile's kind of fucking dug shit. You know, it doesn't really do much. <clears throat> but now, I, now I think it's a good play to play for streaks in the new update. I mean, it's gonna be really important. You can you could basically break any hill, any hill that's out in the open. Like Skid Row P5 Pat is a great example, right? It's just out in the open. There's nowhere to go. Like you can't go anywhere. So if a streak yep. comes down, you're dead. Like you, it's chalked. It's over. With. You can't even finesse like the crate. Nah, you can't <laughs> finesse. You, you just gotta hope that whoever's in the missile just fucks up completely and just misses you. But uh, I doubt that happens, but yeah, a lot of changes are coming. The hard points changed a lot. I'm not gonna sit here and say the spawns got any better because I think the spawns might have gotten worse. Especially I think in the term spawns actually got terminal. Worse, terminal is ruined. Terminal's got that needs to be that 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 map got ruined after the new update. It's Invasion terrible. is ruined. ruined. Um, yeah, we need more maps, guys. I'm telling you, we need more maps or it's gonna get bad. Even today, watching the spawns in the phase optic series was atrocious. What the fuck were those spawns in a series? Even what what was the 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 invasion? The invasion fucking control. Even the hard point, bro. I can't explain half of the spawns that I'm seeing. But people are literally spawning on top of each other. And on invasion, can I talk shit on the devs? Control has maybe better spawns than fucking hard point does in this game sometimes. Yeah, no, Pat, dude. It's I, bad. I, so can I ask a question? Because dude, the spawns are so bad. I've been playing a lot of rank play. Yeah. Why? Why? Like at this point, we you know. Everybody gives the devs benefit of the doubt, blah, blah. It's hard to make a game. Is it like an ego thing with why they don't have Forge in Call of Duty? Like, you know, Forge uh, and Halo 3 I, I, were like... They, they, they I don't think it's an ego thing. They talked about last, adding it. Last game, they said they were going to have it, right? They said they have a yeah, map. Yeah, it just never no, came. They said they'd have a map. I, I heard that's years not the ago same that that's what it was yeah. because it they, was didn't want, they didn't want anybody oh, boy, like... Okay. You know what I mean? The map designers, they like, that's their baby. Bro, but if a map there editor was... is a lot different than Forge. I don't think, though, I don't think just they to be clear, I don't no, yeah, I know, the, I know. But... I don't think they have or could spend a development time to work on that, Ian. At least before launch. It can't now. be that hard if they did it in 08. No, All I'm saying that's, that's is, so, no, that Bungie resource... team was was big, but yeah, it's a lot of work to create something like that. You need a tool. If like, COD had so good spawns, if COD had good spawns though, which if there was a map editor, fucking Pat, you could probably do it. You would you would do better spawns, and the games would actually be good. But this this is the thing. And this, I think, where it goes to ego is I don't I don't think Forge and, and like community. I mean, that'd be great, right? If they could have that feature made. But be I think the, the reality is, and, and I've said this for a long time, and obviously, like, you know, Ray has done it. Um, I'm now at Ubisoft. Like, there needs to be a system in place where some of these studios can hire from, you know, the people that spent decades playing the game and understand systems like this. Um, at least the the logic that goes into it, even if they don't know how to do the technical work, the logic that goes into it to transition that or to like relay that to to a studio or whoever's working on on spawns or whatever. Like because I I, I think it's more of just like an experience, Ian, of like what they're trying to do. Right. And so like when you think about what we need from a spawn system versus you know, like what the casual players care about a spawn system. Like there's, it's not remotely the same. Um, yeah, and, and I think that's the biggest disconnect is there's just, there's not that, you know, the, the call of duty studios have never right. allowed for any, you know, insight from pro players to come in early into a game and, and talk about it. Oh, no, no, they, they allowed thing. us to come in. They just didn't listen to well, anything you, you didn't, said. You, look, I've been to a lot no, of those. Saying, you're not, you're not talking earlier. to anybody. Well, yeah. even then you're not talking to anybody. You're, you're basically just giving feedback and you know, designers yeah. aren't there, studio leads aren't there. Yeah. Um, it's it's just a PR thing, and I think that's that's the issue. I've talked about this a million times. Like, I, I it just told, pisses I me off though, man, because I think for years now, it like spawns was the biggest issue in damn near every game. You can bitch about the maps, I the guns Cold killing War. fast, but like, and I know I'm going back to Halo. Like, I'm an old man. But Halo 3, in my opinion, is still, to this date, the best competitive arena FPS that's ever played. And it was ass cheeks in the beginning. It only got good because they had a forge mode where you and me, Pat, could go in and tweak the spawns. If there were yeah, good spawns that's, that's in COD, it'd be so like entertaining. But, all, but, but also, like, the, the thing that is bad about the COD spawns isn't necessarily the location for the main spawns. Like... When people are supposed to spawn in the right places, it makes sense. But when people start split spawning and like like multiple spawns are being blocked from every team, that is when the spawns are fucking impossible. Yeah. Read. That's where everyone's spawning on top of each other. And I yeah. and I don't know if it's necessarily the spawn like selection. It's like the the algorithm for how it determines where players are gonna spawn and 
I don't even know how they fucking figure that out. Or even with the forge mode, like how did you, how was that even figured can, out? Can, right? I, can I ask, can I ask a question to Pat? I think you might be honest with this. Pat, obviously you now work on development side. What do you think their core, like goal, like overarching goal is with the way the spawn system is designed in this game? Do you think it's trying to get people in the action quickly and give them like a freebie? Do you think there's something else going on? Um, I think it's part of that, right? You got to think like good question. I, the, 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 the big thing for me is when we look at Call of Duty specifically and how much the spawns have changed over time, like spawns used to be good. And like, we can say back in the day they got lucky or whatever, but like there were multiple titles in a row where spawns were great. Black Ops 2, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3 is a great example. Like all three of those iterations of Black Ops had Treyarch, great spawns. Man. Treyarch, man. Um, but it but it also comes to like the experience of the people on that team, right? That under you know understand and, and what they want. If those people phase out, right, go to different companies, leave the company, whatever it may be, then you someone else has to obviously work on that system, right? On on the project. And if that new person who's working on that system on the project isn't experienced in spawns, don't really know. And then the feedback, right? Every dev team, they have daily play tests of their game. If the feedback coming in, isn't really complaining or mentioning spawn problems or whatever, then it's just, it's, it's deprioritized. And I think it's something where been like the casual community is not complaining about spawns and it's really only the competitive community. And it's just something where it's not prioritized at all from, from these studios. And I will tell you like, um, because I've worked very hands-on with our spawn system next defiant, like it's not a hard thing to tweak, you right? Like you just have to know what you want to achieve. And I think that's the the disconnect is like there's not someone there, in my opinion, especially in these Infinity Ward titles, right? We can say this is Sledgehammer's game, but as we know, most of this was copied over from Infinity Ward. Um there's just there's there's not yeah. someone that's been there forever that's that that know, was actually my question, Pat. Correctly. I was gonna but, ask you is you know what what is like the process to changing spawns like is it difficult is it easy to change them like how how, how long would it take like is this something that they can easily do i, I don't want to say it's easy but yeah it I, in my opinion from what i know after working on it on our project it's not something that would take a lot of time to to achieve what you want there is obviously trial and error there's like testing there's reiterating after you know to to fine tune but like i, I disagree that it's that it's difficult to do um yeah i'll, I'll leave it at that what well, are you gonna say ben? Here's, the, here's the issue paz unfortunately we know a bunch of people that were definitely you know in tune with the competitive scene and they were unfortunately part of the layoffs that happened this week so i think you know i don't know at least on that issue how much upset there is obviously we're getting to our game soon so maybe you know they'll bless us but it's definitely a tough thing as a comp scene we get kind of screwed the last good game we had with spawns is cold war out of the box there were some issues, but Cold for the best spawns. shit. But, but it's World also War Treyarch. World War II had Treyarch. spawns. It's, it, yeah, it's also Treyarch, though, and you got to think where there's a lot of people on that team that are very experienced for a long time in making good spawn systems. And, Col and, and World War II, as we know, Rambo went to that project early on. And, like, and if you know he was a consultant or even became a designer, whatever it may be, like he was there giving feedback, and he was obviously someone who's very knowledgeable about spawns. And that, that was what I said, too, before. It's like, you know... Even if you take random player, whoever it is, if they go and consult on the project and they have a ton of experience on how spawn should work, you can communicate that to one of these, you know, system yeah. designers or or whatever. And they could they could they could like if they obviously if they're listening to your feedback, like they could make what you're wanting happen. And I think that's the the big thing where it's like some of these studios, they just think it's you know it's fine as is. And and the big issue which I brought up in the offseason was like they're taking the spawn system that IW used in years past and we're, we're, we're introducing brand new maps. And like these maps, like spawns are very dependent on the maps you play them on. Um, and I think that's, that's the biggest issue we're seeing is that we're seeing, you know, this newer age spawn system where it's way more chaotic on maps that were made in 2009. And as we know, like they're very open, they're very different. There's not a lot of back area to the map. Um, so yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, guys, that's the tournament. That's what happened today. Toronto Ultra, they they run through the whole thing. They don't lose a series. They go all the way. Uh, four series, and they're champions. Um, so congratulations to Toronto Ultra. They deserved it. Uh, huge shout-out to them. Atlanta FaZe, another second placing. Another second place placing. I'm sure they're not liking that one. As a FaZe fan myself, I mean, they just keep getting second, man. Are you good? 
Yeah, I was raising my hand. I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, go ahead, Ian. What's up, bro? Oh, no, I just, I wanted to get, so I was meaning to say, and then Pat went on an absolute snoozer of a rant. <laughs> yeah, I, want to I get it, bro, back. Ian. You're, you're ADHD, like, you can't focus for longer than 10 seconds only thing and me talking about something. I focus on is the bank roll, baby. I want to circle back to Tom, the I you something, by the way. Um, I bet. Put in the flame. I, I don't know if you could pull the I scoreboard did. up, but I, I wanted your guys' opinion because obviously, like, a BZ, right? We had already talked about the faster sub players. Mm -hmm. Like, he had a rough series, but do you guys think that he is having the – him and Shotzi are having the same issue? Yeah, I yes. do. Like, do, like do, you, do, you, do you think it's – do you think he's just trying to make too many plays? Yeah, I think he's trying to do honest, too much. I, I mean, I there was a point in that others. Skid Row hard point where he – Well, yeah. A BZ was well, like just, 4 and 15, and every single time he died, he was sprinting. He was just running. Yeah. Just constantly running, constantly getting caught sprinting. I mean – yeah, I think I think with him, Shotzi, I mean, I used to be a sub player, right? That that was the one thing you always had to focus on every single year mm -hmm. is focus on your routes, focus on your positioning, focus on how to be a nuisance, how to be consistent, right? That's the hardest thing as a sub player, especially early on in the game. And it was their first time on land in this game as well. And some sub players, depending on the game and stuff like that, some subs pick it up quicker than others, right? Good example, apathy, right? Like, Bro, App used to get way better as the year went on. Did he not get way better? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, year, like at the I, end of champs time, it would be I, insane. Go ahead, Pat. What are you going to say? Go ahead, bro. I, I was going to say, I think what we're missing here is Kleenex, though. Kleenex just got MVP. He's still an aggressive sub player. Yeah. But he doesn't play at that speed 24-7. Like, Kleenex still plays like an extremely fast player, but knows when to rat it up. And I think that's the difference is like, you know, Shotzi to me is like one gear. He's just always going, always going, always going. Um, and he's always challenged. And that's why his engagements are so high. But like Kleenex does the same shit majority of the time, except he knows in situations when to slow it down. And to me, but, I mean. And he runs an AR lot. Pat, is Kleenex it a runs yeah. an AR lot. But I think Shotzi can too. He can, and I, he can. Same thing with Abizi. Like, bro, look at the maps we're playing. Like, I don't. Uh, four ARs will work. Like, yeah, they have to change I, it up. They're going to have to change it up. Do you think it's a pacing thing though, or because you guys have obviously watched more than I have in this game? Um, mm -hmm. But like, is it a pacing thing, Shotzi or Kleenex that like Shotzi doesn't know how to slow it down, or he's just making the wrong plays? Like he's like he's just not making the correct play. No, nah, I wouldn't say he's not making the correct play. I would say it's more of him just being just, too, just, just too going. aggressive, just too going, trying to do too That's much fair. sometimes. That's like fair. even in search, he's playing too many one and done spots. Like, bro, he. Perfect example, Invasion s &D. Every yeah. single defense round, he goes to the same build. He goes to the broken building, changes up his spots over there, and goes and plays in that broken building. And every round, he either one gets blooded, or he gets one, and then he throws a smoke down and tries to get out, and then he gets blooded. It's very rare he gets one and gets out of there, right? He's playing one-and-done spots. Like, they need to be tighter. They need to play with each other more. Yeah, no, I feel that. I feel that. And makes it goes sense. back to like the Shotzi and Pred thing, right? Like being on the same page. Like that's what we were talking about. Like stuff like that. Got to be in the same page in every game mode. Like I agree with Chris on, on what you were saying, Chris. Like every game mode realistically plays exactly the same. You got to know how to hold as a team and break as a team. And it, right now, they're just struggling to do that. And just gets caught out too many times. Same with Abizi. Same today. They were both they getting caught out. They should be picking up an uh, AR every time they kill an AR player. No oh, bullshit. Every time. I, I, oh, I God. That, God yeah, if you're not I picking up an AR, lot. you're trolling. You're but trolling. if you're going, if you're going four, you know, if you're starting off like four and fifteen, like is you're not getting enough kills to pick up. You're AR still finding situations. dead bodies on the map. Like your teammates are dying. Like just pick up a damn gun so you have both. You also think, need to pick your I, spots. Like with a sub, you have to play smart, but you got to stay ahead of rotation, play your corners, play close listen. quarters. Like you can't just run around ego challenging with this sub, Tom's, with the rival. You can't. I think do to that. your point, Tom, this game is very difficult for you to make solo plays as a sub. It is. Like there are going to be opportunities. Karachi's a good one where maps where you can do that but like you're playing invasion you're gonna be working off your team to set up the sub player to get kills and, and, really and, and, and let me money. give you an example from my career right in world war ii right yeah. i used to take over with the pbsh i could take over that yeah, i could did. i could yeah, take over did. a map yeah we know you were day. london doc sd your mid map fucking yeah ever, not even fucking... sd just hard point. But... take over any second but black ops 4 game comes out the sog i'm dirt shit bro i'm dropping a point <laughs> seven to be bro. fair every kenny sub drop... yeah everybody kenny point seven with that his was sub. insane by fucking the way john that they had point that seven they just didn't have a hit point seven no hit can scub right what did kenny do the first week of black ops 4 the first two weeks of black ops 4 what did kenny do what do you do he switched to the Maddox. He got the fuck out of there. He switched to the you fuck out of there. You know what he Maddox. said, Tom? 
He said, I ain't running this shit. He said, fuck this. He said, he said, Ian, you got this shit. I said, you, I already got enough. And you're making me run in vision posts. Nah, that's nah, crazy. You got to build, in, you gotta a build in control free. No, no, they no, put no, you in a blender. They put you in a blender. On a team without a hit scan gun? They, they put you in a blender. But the, the, the whole, the whole point, of, point of my example is from game to game as a sub player, you have to adapt based on the gun you're using, the maps you're playing. You have to just play completely different. I think as the year goes on, shots in the bees are going to get way better. Hold on, but we also got to stop acting like they're running, subs, they're, they're running subs the whole time. I just think they're not that good with ARs because we see them a couple of times with ARs out. And they're like when they have to run ARs, because on some of these maps, they're running ARs the whole time. Like, yeah, they might be sub players, but they're running an AR the whole time. And they're probably better with them. But that's an adjustment, Chris. That's an adjustment. Of no, course, no, of course. No, 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 no. But Chris, they're they are super talented they players. They might not be that good with the AR gun. Like, yeah. They just might not be that good at it. Yet. Yet. Bro, it's a BZ and Shotzi. They can shoot an MCW. That gun is easy as fuck to yeah, use. Yeah, it's not bro. about shooting the gun. It's about positioning yourself in the right way, getting the right, right spots. Which, like is, which right Chris, shit. which Chris, that's an adjustment. Like that's 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 yeah. that's the adjustment that uh, they're well, gonna yeah, have to I mean, make. I'm not that's, gonna say that's not possible. For right, them to make. and then they're they're in the middle the of the adjustment situation. period. No, I agree with you, Chris. They're just they're in the middle of an adjustment period right now, and I think as the year goes on, they'll only get better. That's that's my opinion. I agree. I think it was a good tournament well, out of the top three. No, it was they, a good they, event. They had a good event. They played well. Yeah, I think all three teams are like by far ahead of the rest of the pack. Bro, it's Toronto uh, phase optic in that order, top three, yeah. like, without a doubt. Yeah. Like those yeah. are the top three teams. And then I, that that's gonna fluctuate throughout the year. Like I can see Optic getting better, phase getting better, Toronto, you know, everybody they're well, just gonna York, continue. New York's to get better. the team the New York's to me the team I'm looking towards for this next stage because I think Dead last is not. I think New York will be. be fine, bro. Like I think this weekend yeah. was just a, a just an absolute anomaly. They'll come back. They'll probably go five and two or six and one in the online stage and look good. Still but think P Dog was the glue. P Dog was one thing a very I will big say loss, man. That won't get better as the year goes on. Tom is the prize pool. I don't know if you guys saw this. <laughs> yeah, can we talk about but, this? Wait, yeah, yeah, pull it up. Yeah, I think you pull it up. Yeah, yeah, I pulled it up. I they it up. they like secretly nerfed the prize pool twenty five percent, and we got one less major than we had last That's year. Nasty work. That's nasty work. That did nasty did work. anybody see any announcement or anything that stated this is nope. going to change? Spinner yeah, Spence nope. is taking some off the top. So That's what I heard. That's crazy, man. So, so last year, it went from half a million to three seventy five. It went from five hundred yeah, to three seventy five. Twenty five percent cut across every every placing. It was 200, 120, 80, I think, was like the top three. And now it's 150, 90, 60. So mm. I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of mind blown that we had, we heard absolutely nothing about it. You know, usually they announce like every year, like how much prize pool is coming out, whatever. But to secretly nerf it or cut it 25% across the board for all events and then also cut the majors by one, that's kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy. I guess they're trying to find that money to pay off the CDL teams at the end of the year like they did with Overwatch. I don't know where else it could be going. <laughs> So how much realistically are people making? So so if you take this right, one hundred fifty thousand. Fifty k. One hundred fifty k. Toronto, right? Toronto got fifty k. Divided each. by four. Yeah, but then there's an org cut. Right, that's then thirty. That's, that's thirty-seven thousand five hundred. You 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 put taxes into that. Let's say forty percent. Right, we and the that org by, cut, Tom. Every team's yep, got an org cut. There. I'm getting there. So say fifteen thousand. Right, take fifteen thousand off the thirty-seven thousand. Right, boom, boom, minus that. Go fuck it. Damn, bro. They're getting fucking finessed, Wait, you're, but, Tom, but Tom, But, Tom, do outside the top four. Do, like, five, six, seven, and eight. Like, think about them with oh, a it's work over cut. With. It's over with. Or, Imagine bro, how, yo, I'd be so pissed if I was, like, that's like that Legion. Legion that, that's what I'm saying. That's 1,800 Ugh. each, right? And then you take the org cut and or the taxes. Yeah, we need 40% of that. Well, the org cut is obviously scales. Not every org takes the same amount of money, to be fair. Yeah, the but there's, there is there's an org cut on almost every team, if not every team. To be honest, I think, though. I, I don't. I, optics on the orgs that I'm pretty All right. One org doesn't have an org cut. To be right. honest, though, Pat, it's still good money because the players make majority of their cash from but, their contract. Obviously, you look at like another esports. No, but that's what I'm saying. Outside the top four, is it good money? That's what I'm asking. Like, yeah, we I know mean, they're Legion. still making over six figures, no? How? Legion's on the minimum, and they're getting $500 an event for placing eighth? The place better. I, I heard, though. Yeah. I mean, they're, I heard, that's I what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The first place, Toronto Ultra will profit about I, 20K each after you, after you get in the I, organization right fees, now? taxes. No, but I'm saying, Ben, we're talking about call. like the top four is locked. Let's just, I'm just going to say it. We all know it. The top four is locked yeah, for locked. the most part. And so top it's like three is every. Locked. Okay, yeah. So every other team in the league, Ben, is competing for five through seven prizing. 
Okay. And they're on minimum contracts. Like Ian, I don't think any of them are going to clear you're, over you're, 100k. You're making assumptions. What what I, I heard that I heard that they, that they weren't on minimum like, contracts, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I listen. Uh, you might want to check on what. Not making paid. that many assumptions. I don't think everybody. Vegas I, 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 I don't, don't know sure, played the men. Whatever you I, want to tell yourself, bro. I would Carolina say 85 percent. Maybe not Clay. Like I would say 85 percent of the players are probably making six figures over or over six figures. 85 percent of the players in the league. No yeah, way. I think so. No way. No I mean the shot. bottom okay, the bottom teams like maybe like the Legion and the Ravens, they're they're making close to it if they're not. No Clay, shot. Clay definitely is making over six figures. Yeah, Clay, he's an anomaly. I've already so said is that. Attach. Everyone else on so is squad. attach. Dude. Like like without a doubt they are. There's just no way. Miami, L A G, no way. All I'm saying is like for yeah, I'm just saying cutting prize pool, like that's that's a big deal. No, I, I agree. Pat, I didn't even know I, they I agree, did that. I agree with Pat, and they still did it, and that kind of absolutely fucking blows. Considering there's one less event for them to make cash at, like if you think about from last year. I will also say, like most of the players are making decent money. A lot of them do screen; they make income from that. Brand deals for some, and prize money. Like these guys are generally making more money than people are making at their age. But I agree with you; it is a reduction from last year and the year before. And some of the economic conditions, some of that is the esports winter shed. Me and Pat hit that lick, got out. You, you know? curious, like, like, I'm gonna look it up. Like, uh, Ooh, that shit was definitely. Wait, it, it, you lucky Sam wasn't here. Sam was just telling us about you. You were hitting the lick trading on the side at an event. You weren't That's what playing. I do. I always trade the Amazon options. <laughs> that guy couldn't yeah. sell me nothing with you're that lucky, contract. Lucky Gamble, Sam here, they that said, that I'm benching your ass. I said, yeah, dude, you're trade, you're trade <laughs> Oh, that's, I already signed that shit in blood, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna see y'all, man. Good luck. No, no, that, that team in the contracts you guys got was fucking criminal, respectfully, and I love you, but... That's actually funny. That shit, that shit, hey, that shit was man, Hey, hey, you're worth what people will pay you. That's, that's all I got to say. That's true. Man, that's facts, facts, you know? bro. I respect it. I respect it. That's facts. Yo, Benji, you're going to hit this putt? Don't embarrass yourself. We got a special yeah. guest. Uh, so, Tom, just to, before I hit this putt, we're telling you what we'll probably do a show midweek and do... Well, there's going to be Ross Romania info. We're gonna yeah, probably talk guys, about what the roster mania is. tier lists. Um, you know, oh, wait, hold, on, hold on, hold on, Ian, Ian, he's talking about our contracts. Are we gonna go act like Activision didn't finesse these organizations into a twenty-five million dollar contract? Like what? I don't got a dog in this fight. Yeah, you, got, you got to fight that by yourself. You that, you see, what? You say that as if the owners didn't know what they were getting into, though. You're they, they, got they didn't. Swindled. They got finesse. Why do you think they're all fucking wanting to well, get out? I mean, but they agreed to fucking pay twenty five. Yeah, over this the product was not worth a twenty five million dollar buy in, bro. Listen, that's the whole point. That's listen, why half the orgs that were interested instantly we, said no and got spend, out. We could spend two hours about it. I think everybody's at fault for what the fuck happened, but I think that's a three hour fucking conversation. And I'm glad to get into it someday and, and explain how everybody fucked this up. It's Take not your pants off, yo, yo, Ian, Ian, these orgs are paying the league twenty five million. I'm supposed to feel bad because they paid a couple hundred thousand. Like what? Uh, no, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Ugh. All right, Benjamin. <laughs> wait, wait, he be doing this shit <laughs> with his dogs bullshit. out like that? Bro, yeah, he, all the time. Bro, bro. Ian, that's I normally does, bro. dogs out, no slippers, no shoes. He steps up to the plate and he sinks the putt. Ian, he missed the putt yesterday. He fucked up bad, bro. He so normally, I, I normally I turn it off right after you tell me Ben's about to go putt. So, <laughs> damn, man. <laughs> Got yeah, the dog ben, you got the man. When are you gonna put some fucking socks on, man? When I, when I fucking start missing putts, you missed one yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that was just one bump in the road, bro. Oh, okay. It's not about how hard you can hit, right, Ben? What's the rest of it? Uh, I actually don't know the rest. Ah, you <laughs> motherfucker! You don't know that quote? You don't know that quote? I forgot, I forgot, I forgot the day quote. Day. I forgot the quote, and I didn't want to fucking. It's about how yeah, hard so. you can get hit and keep moving forward, man. Come on, you gotta fucking. Yeah, that was that. good. Come on, that was bro. good. Are you you fucking spit with that. Me? Come on, you nuts. But yo, uh, Ian, thank you for hopping on, bro. I love thank having you guys. You on, bro, I love having you on for sure. We got no, yeah, you Ian, it was a blast, bro. Probably the worst episode ever, but it's all good because it was a blast having you. Nah, it was good, man. It was good. Hey, can I say one thing? As much as possible. Yeah, go ahead. I say one thing first. Let me say two things actually. Zoo Mafia, Letters of Mafia. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, Second, yeah. if anybody didn't watch COD in the old days, go back watch AW Champs. Pat robbed me and Haggy oh, of a ring of go. a ring. Teammate of me go. five five. And then got losers first blood. finals. And then got first blood. But if you want to go to the real story here, Ian. I got Team Revenge, the motherfuckers that would uh, not oh, G GA My fault, anything My fault, to play with no GAs. I sit down. I tell you guys I'm happy as fuck. And Chris goes, nah, I'm going to use a shotgun on Biolab. <laughs> and then we get LNG'd and IMR'd and fucking shotgunned and all this bullshit the rest of the series. I just ooped it off the backboard of Pat. 
Accidentally, my fault, Chris. That was crazy. But no, I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you for real. Listen, I thought it was yeah, hijack man. hard point all over again, man. I thought I was about to be down what? there with the fucking shotgun, man. Oh shit. It's biolab. No, listen, I know listen, it's a joke. Ian, you're, you're it's always, CO2. Ian, you're always welcome back, bro. Anytime, my guy. Yeah, hey, kick me. Sam's bum ass out out of here. <laughs> Yeah, Sam, kidding, Sam dipped kidding. out. I didn't know he was. He, he, he didn't watch the grand final. He fucking. Did, I don't know. He had plans or something. He had to go do something. He's Sam a 49ers like, fan. Bro, guys got green in his hair. Like, you got to be a weirdo if you put shit in your hair, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. But yeah, I'm Ian, why'd you get the ladybug dude. on your head? What was the point in that? Yeah, no, it's he, smiley faces because I'm crazy. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> All right, bro, let's end it there, man. Guys, the weekend was great, man. The shows are good. The watch parties are all good. There's a lot of energy in the chat all weekend long, man. So we really appreciate all the love that you guys have been showing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have been enjoying the episodes. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Go to anchor.fm slash the flank to check out all the audio sites that we're on. That's Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. Uh, go follow at the flank on Twitter. Gersh doing a phenomenal job running socials as always. And then, guys, go check out Zuma.gg uh, to check out all the merch that's out right now. Right now, it's just the FC Black jersey, but we'll be releasing some more merch on there as well. So make sure to go check out Zuma.gg. PrizePicks.com. Use code Zuma as well. Take care. Brush your hair. And we'll see you guys next time on another episode of The Flank, man. Probably the midweek. We'll do a tier list. Uh, maybe do uh, some Q&A with the, with the supporters, with you guys. And uh, and Ben, what else do we gotta fucking do? We gotta do other shit though. Oh, Roster Mania, Roster Mania is gonna blow up, so we'll have a lot going on. Uh, so just make sure you guys are following, subscribing, the whole nine yards, and uh, we'll get it going, man. Take care, budget, and we'll see you guys next time on another episode of the Flank, man. Take it easy. Is Ian the only esport player with a CTE?